Good morning. <laughs> uh, we never plan these things. What? We um, always plan them. No, we don't. Oh. We know we're going to do well, it. We know we're going to do it. We know what the text is going to be. <laughs> yeah, we picked the hymn we picked the 10 hymn. minutes ahead. So That's planning. Yeah, okay. Well, this morning, I apologize. <laughs> we're Disclaimer. watching somebody disclaimer. else's dog. Katie's but for Katie, okay, well, I didn't know that they wanted us to say that because this might be an embarrassment. <laughs> because one dog plus one dog is five dogs, just so you know. And uh, in order to keep them from getting into anything, they have to be here in the room with us. So <laughs> it's a small room, <laughs> and we have uh, definitely a dog and a half here, so... They're very happy together. They're very happy together, yeah. So we'll see how this goes. You might hear some mm -hmm. joyful noises besides mm. ours. So we're going to sing hymn number 410. This text, this story of Jesus in the temple, does not take place in the Gospel of Matthew. It's only in Luke. Well, Luke is the only one who records it. But it is during the time of Jesus growing up in Nazareth, and that's the subject of our text. So this is hymn number 410, Within the Father's House. <laughs> Within the Father's house, the Son has found his home, and to his temple suddenly the Lord of life has come. The doctors of the law gaze on the wondrous child, and marvel at his gracious words of wisdom undefiled. To them is given the mighty truth to know, to lift the earthly veil that hides incarnate God below. The secret of the Lord escapes each human eye, and faithful pondering hearts await the full epiphany. Lord, visit thou our souls. And teach us by thy grace, each dim revealing of thyself with loving awe to trace. Till we behold thy face, and know as we are known, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost co-equal three in one. I guess so. What is Lucy? Lucy moment. is a labradoodle, so she's yeah. she's a big dog. So she's been throwing her weight around a little bit. Okay. The return yeah. to Nazareth. That's a camera. Matthew two verse nineteen. 19. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise. Take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth so that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled, that he would be called a Nazarene. So, uh, a lot of things going on here. Actually, I mean, it's a very simple, simple section of scripture, but um, first of all, I've wrestled with the big city versus small town thing. Or countryside thing. We love it out in the country. We're not really city people. And and yet, the city where so many people are, you'd think, oh, that's that's a place that God loves because God loves people. And he wants us to be doing ministry in the city. But Jesus is raised out in the middle of nowhere, in a town of about 400. Nice. Well. Hey, I don't know how to stop them. So. They're being quiet. Yeah, right. 
Uh, <laughs> no marking. Right. Um. So so, big city, Jerusalem, and so on, all those places, uh, or tiny little Nazareth of maybe four hundred people. God works in both of these places, right? The the uh, politics that's going on. Herod dies. Herod dies. But Archelaus takes over, and and it's another it's another dishonest, violent politician. Um, people who people who live out in the country, people who are just seeking to do God's will, also have to maneuver around the world's politics, right? And and what are we going to do? Where should we live? And uh, what's going to happen? Um, there's there's uh, all these considerations about about how to live, where to live. We make those same kinds of calculations today. Well, we need to be near a hospital. We need to be near my doctors. We, we want to be near the grandchildren. We, we need to, uh, we like the restaurants and the, and the cultural life of the city. Oh, we like the country air and the lack of traffic, right? The, everybody has all these things going on. Or, People these days move for political reasons, too. Uh, I want to get to a state that has this or has that. Um, what's God doing? God could send his son anywhere. Anywhere. Quite literally. But he goes to Nazareth. Like all these other things in Jesus' life, born in Bethlehem, because of saying this is this person is in the line of David, he'd be in the line of David anyway. But we want to show he's born in the city of David. He is coming as the king, like David. Traveling to Egypt, well, they could have gone to Damascus, they could have gone to Moab, they could have gone to many places, but they go to Egypt because God's people had been enslaved in Egypt, and God brought them out of Egypt. And so, God patterns. Uh, Jesus patterns his life to teach. To teach something. And so now, they're moving back to the promised land. Where could they live? They could live in the north. They could live in the south. They could live by the Galilee. They could live by Jerusalem. They go to Nazareth. From the word netzer, or branch, because Jesus would be the branch of Judah, the 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 shoot that comes from the stump that restores. Uh, why don't you pick up Captain? There we go. Good idea. No, Lucy. And Lucy no. will stay by because of yeah. Captain. There we go. Yeah. Um, hard to concentrate. So that he'll be called a Nazarene. So that he'll be called the branch. So he comes from, as, as he begins his ministry, he comes from the lowly and despised and arises then to be seen as the king. I don't know how you make choices about where to live. How you make choices about what to do in life. Uh, there's all kinds of factors involved, right? But, but one, I hope the largest one is, what is God going to do there? What does God have in mind for us? Uh, Jesus would be just a child in this place. His most significant things don't happen in Nazareth. It's just a place where he's raised. But it is a place that shapes his life and so many of his parables come from there. Nazareth is, is up on this hill, uh, quite tall, and overlooking the valley of Megiddo. Uh, and, and from Nazareth, you can see all these places where history takes place. Um, from uh, Mount Carmel to Nain to uh, um, Megiddo, the city of, there's so many things. Jesus grows up in the middle of the history of his people and fulfills 
all of God's promises that were held, believed, but not seen for all that time. And as a child, God's, God's work is not visible, but it's taking place nonetheless as Jesus grows. So I don't know what's happening in your life, in your small town, or your country, or in your big city. Uh, maybe it's not possible to see what's going on, just as with Jesus growing next door, people couldn't see what God was doing. But God's salvation is on the way. And God's plan is being moved forward. And God's promise for you is being fulfilled. Heavenly Father, these are places far away. Uh, most of us have never been there or are not familiar with them. But you are familiar with our places. The place where we were born. The house where we grew up. The schools we attended. The, the cities where we lived and worked. At times it didn't seem to us as if you were doing anything. But just as in some place in Egypt and lowly Nazareth, you were doing great things. Lord, give us eyes to see, or faith to trust when we cannot see, that you're working among us also. And just as you brought Jesus there, and from there you brought him to all the towns and villages of Galilee and Judea, bring him also to us. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Alright. We need to see Lucy. Yeah, alright. Here's, here's Lucy. Say hi. Hey, Say Lucy. Hi, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll have another wrestling match tomorrow and Wednesday. And then um, it'll be back to just us. <laughs> <laughs> have a great day.